At the end of World War II, the USSR put forward a territorial claim against Kors and Ardahan provinces of Turkey. It was planned to settle Armenians in Kars province, while Georgians in Ardahan province after their annexation to the USSR. Armenian leaders, taking advantage of this opportunity, immigrated about 100,000 Armenians from foreign countries for their first settlement in Kars province. In return, they succeeded in adoption of the USSR Council of Ministers resolution of the 23rd of December 1947 on voluntary relocation of 100,000 Azerbaijanis from Armenia to Kudaras lowland of Azerbaijan and deportation of nearly the same number of Azerbaijanis from their historical and ethnic lands from 1948 to 1953. The anti-Turkish and anti-Azerbaijani propaganda campaign was relaunched in Armenia with all its strengths in mid-1960s. A ceremony to mark the 50th anniversary of the so-called Armenian Genocide was held in Armenia in 1965 after consultation with Moscow. A committee for reunification of Armenia was set up in Yerevan in that period. The committee was secretly led by the leaders and intellectuals of Armenia. Its main goal was to annex Turkish Armenia, Nakhchivan and Nagorno-Karabakh to Armenia. Hundreds of families were forced to move from Yerevan and its surrounding regions to Azerbaijan as a result of the national policy of discrimination pursued in Armenia at that time. The program of the undeclared crusade against Azerbaijanis living in Armenia was being developed in the country's highest circles and implemented through secret decisions and special instructions. On the 24th of April 1983, Armenians attacked the houses of Azerbaijanis in Ulhan settlement, the central part of Masis province, under the pretext of day of genocide and destroyed the gravestones in the graveyard of the settlement. After Mikhail Gorbachev became the leader of the Soviet Union in 1985, the nationalist climate was getting more heated in Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh autonomous region under the guise of reformation and publicity. 1st of February 1988, Demir Bulak, the only mosque operating in Yerevan, the building of the Azerbaijan secondary school named after Mirzafet al-Akhundov and the belongings of the Yerevan state Azerbaijani drama theater named after Jafar Japarli were burned down. The houses of Azerbaijanis who protested against the incidents in Yerevan were set on fire. The Supreme Council of the Armenia SSR in its session held on the 15th of June 1988 adopted a resolution on annexation of Nagorno-Karabakh to Armenia and applied to the USSR Supreme Council to give its consent. The situation of Azerbaijanis living in Armenia became worse after the Supreme Council of the Azerbaijan SSR rejected this legal claim on the 17th of June. The furious Armenian protesters gathering on Yerevan's Seata Square from June 17 to 20 attacked the central part of Masis city as well as Zangilar, Zahmet, Demirchiler, Dostluk, Nizami and Sarvanlar villages populated by Azerbaijanis. Over 10,000 defenseless Azerbaijanis gathered on the Soviet-Turkish border and were obliged to stay there for several days. More than 20 Azerbaijanis were injured on those days. Over 3,000 Azerbaijanis were driven out of their houses in Wuhan settlement. In general, approximately 250,000 Azerbaijanis from 22 villages and six cities of Armenia were barbarously driven out of their historical and ethnic lands as a result of the latest ethnic cleansing. Before 1988, the area populated by Azerbaijanis in Armenia constituted 25% of the country's territory or approximately 7.5 thousand square kilometers. 
This is nearly 3,000 square kilometers, more than the territory of former Nagorno-Karabakh. Batı tarafında da sofaklar verilmiştir. Mesela malumdur Mehri rayonunda büyük mühadi kendi var. Çok millik ahalisi olan bir kenttir. Sırf Azerbaycanlı kendidir. Arazin Kırağı'nda Nakçıvan'la Azerbaycan'ın büyük torpağını aralayan bu Ermenistan'ın, İndi Ermenistan'ın olan hissesinde Mehri rayonu düz Demek o mesafenin ortasında yerler. Hemen o Nüvedi kendi de 29 yılında verilipti. Azerbaycan terkibinden Ermenistan'a verildi. Tamam Azerbaycan kendi olarak. Kadim Azerbaycan çok büyük enelere mensup olan bir şey. Ve onda diyebilirim ki o Nüvedi halisi çok dayanetli insanlar var. Onlar hatta Ermenistan'ın arasından Azerbaycanlıların ekseriyeti çıkardığı halde 91. yılda ben katrimdedim. Müvedden çıkmırdılar onlar. Onları sonra zorla oradan çıkarttılar, getirdiler. Ee, Zengilan'da bir becnevi kendi var, onun yanında çadırlarda onlar yaşıyor. Onlar çıkmırdılar, onlar mübarize parıklar. Onlar oradan çıkarda da bilmedi. Sonra bir neşe de ben Nakçıvan'a geldiler, benim yanıma, benden imdat istediler ama ben özüm Nakçıvan'ı e, çok çakınlığıyla koruyordum, onlara ne edebilirdim? Ama ona bak merak, ben vertaliyot vasıtasıyla, onda bizim imkanımız vardı, vertaliyot vasıtasıyla bir neşe de ben oraya hemen o Zengilan'da ve Cinevi kendinin yanında yerleşen o çadırlara, o nüvetlerin yanına nümayetleri gönderdim ve oraya biz müeyyen Yardım gönderdik onlarla alaka sağlıyor. Kar yağın narın narın Üzüldülür dallarım O yaşıyor hallarım Babamın hatiyeti Kar yağın narın narın Üzüldülür dallarım O yaşıyor hallarım Nuvedi, the last Azerbaijan village situated in the borderline region between Armenia's Mehri region and Azerbaijan's Zengilan district, was also emptied on the 8th of August 1991. Every nation names their territory in their native languages. But the territory populated by Hais was named by other nations. Armenians called themselves Hais and their country Hayastan. But the world knows them as Armenians and Armenia. This fact alone showed that Armenia is a fictitious state. From this point of view, it will be right to consider present-day Armenia as Russian Armenia. This is a new history too. After Nakhchivan and Yerevan Khanids were included in Russia in 1828, an Armenian province was established for the first time by the order of Dad Nicholas I. In 1829, Chopin took a census of the population and made the list of settlements in the newly established Armenian province by the order of Russian general Murat Paskevich. According to the list, 831 settlements were located in Yerevan district, 221 in Nakhchivan district, and 58 in Ordubad district. Only 62 settlements were Armenian ones. According to Chopin's estimations, nearly 23,730 families or 118,650 people lived in the territory of Armenian province. About 69% of the population or 81,749 people were Muslim Tatars, 21% or 25,131 people were Armenians and 10% or 
or 11,770 people were cut and other nations. Today, 99% of the people living in those lands are Armenians. Several years later, a policy of genocide and ethnic cleansing was pursued against Azerbaijanis living in these lands. Nuvati was one of over a thousand Azerbaijani villages that existed in the early 20th century. The fact that Nuvati village has an ancient history and Azerbaijanis have been living in these lands from ancient times have been proven with refutable arguments. The stone inscriptions found by my close friend Hamza Wale, who was also the resident of Nuvadi village, show that Turkish tribes have lived here for thousands of years. The stone inscriptions, known as Gargar scripts, have texts inscribed with Orhan Yenisei alphabet on them, and these stone inscriptions date back to ancient times. At the same time, Hamza Wali proved through his researches that the Huramids movement against Arabs took place exactly in Zangazur district from the 7th century to the 8th century. The fact that the tomb of Babaj, who led the movement, is a little away from the Wadi village, showed that this village is an ancient Azerbaijani land. When looking at the history of this region before and after Babak's movement, we can see that the people living here were distinguished for their warlike character. In 1929, Nuvadi village was excluded from Azerbaijani SSR and included in the territory of Armenian SSR. Moreover, Azerbaijanis were deported from the territory of Armenian SSR by decree of Stalin, the then leader of the USSR, in 1949. As always, the residents of Nevada village demonstrated their bellicosity this time too. They protested against the instructions on deportation by such a merciless leader as Stalin. The villagers stated that Nuvati was the territory of Azerbaijan until 1929, and if the leadership of Armenian SSR wants to move Azerbaijanis to Azerbaijan SSR, then the village must be returned to Azerbaijan SSR. Of course, Armenians would never satisfy such a claim. Although nearly 150,000 Azerbaijanis were deported, from the territory of Armenian SSR from 1947 to 1953, the residents of Nevada village managed to stay in their lands. Unfortunately, Armenia's next policy of ethnic cleansing that started in 1988 was pursued in Nevada village as well. However, the residents of Nevada village has always distinguished themselves for their Bellicosity at that time. All the Azerbaijanis living in the territory of Armenian SSR were forcibly driven out of their eternal lands in late November 1988. All the residents of Nevadi village put up resistance and defended their lands until August 1991. Starting from 22nd of November 1988, all the Azerbaijanis were banished from Armenia within three to four days based on the same scenario. The traitorous neighbors who had become seriously and strictly organized for decades started to implement the insidious plans from early 1988 with the support of then leadership of the USSR. They first organized rallies in Nagorno-Karabakh and called for annexation to Armenia and later on organized Sumerian events as part of their subversive activities to demonstrate to the world that the coexistence of these two nations was supposedly impossible. It was not so easy to perceive all this on first days. 
the atrocities committed against our people by perfidious Dashnak Armenians in early and the mid 20th century were reflected in historical documents as well. Was it possible for Azerbaijanis to keep living in their native lands, which were later on called Armenia, where they had lived over centuries? Imagine that the armed gangs of Armenian robbers, in the presence of chiefs of law enforcement bodies of all Armenian regions and party leaders, warn the population, you will undergo attacks if you do not leave your homes within a short period of time and we will not be found guilty as we issued a warning. Who could we have trusted and pinned our hopes on if these words had been said in front of the leadership of regions by showing different arms? The interesting fact is that the leaders of the powerful Soviet Union did not think about ensuring the security of their citizens. On the contrary, they assisted Armenians in implementing their plans in the pace of developments. The Armenian organizations seemed to be making deals with the forces that were leading the USSR to collapse. At that time, one needed to see with their own eyes the tragedy of the people who were banished from Armenia after facing any form of vandalism. The residents of only Nuvadi village in Zangezer province, an eternal Turkish land located on the banks of the Aras river, got organized within a short period of time and decided not to leave their motherland. This was a long and painful struggle that lasted till the 8th of August 1991. Not long after the village was emptied, a correspondent of the Norway Znamia magazine published in Moscow interviewed the Armenian leadership of Mehri region. At the time, we were living in tents in Zangilan district of Azerbaijan Republic. A few people from Moscow, who were supposed to deal with human rights issues, visited us. One of them was a journalist, and I was my discontent with the interview published in the Norway Islamic magazine. The article read that the leadership of Mehir region had not told the residents of Nuvadi village anything and that they had left their homes on their own will. I believe that if the correspondent had been sober-minded and unbiased, he would have ended the article at least with this quote. If the residents of Nuvadi had left the village on their own will, why had they endured all hardships and stayed there for three years? The journalist, no doubt, had nothing to say. Mehri region was established on account of territories of Nuvadi and other Azerbaijani villages. The 26 km section of the 46 km long territory located between Zengilan and Udbad districts of Azerbaijan was the territory of Nuvadi village that was included in Zengilan district of Azerbaijan's Karabakh Khanate. It was decided to grant the territories of Nuvadi and the several other villages to Armenia at a meeting of the leadership of the Transcaucasian Socialist Federative Soviet Republic held on the 18th of February 1929. The aim was clearly to establish Mehri region, splitting Azerbaijan into two parts. It was impossible to prevent achieving this aim, since the historical situation was intricate at that time. The residents of Nuvali village made an appeal to the leadership of USSR and international organizations through Radio Liberty from 1988 to 1991. We wanted then and want today that historical justice be restored. Nuvadi must return to its villages. The settlement of Armenians in the Azerbaijan lands dates back to 1431 
At that time, an Armenian priest by name Grigor Makului paid 80,000 dinars to Amir Rustam, the envoy of Yagu Padisha, who was one of the Argoin rulers, and purchased the Echmedzin church and the territories around it. Those purchased documents had been kept in Matinadaran until the recent years. The documents prove that the settlement of Armenians in the territory of present-day Armenia dates back to the 15th century. The documents also prove that the Echmedzin church, considered by Armenians as a religious center, was built by the Christian Turks who once lived in these lands. The historical conditions emerged after the first settlement accelerated the inflow of Armenians to these lands. Russia's gaining strength, particularly in the north, and Peter's now will, offered favorable conditions.